fellow geekoids. It's me, yes. Um, on this video, I'm going to be going through some bits and pieces with you um, about resin cockpits and just the resin cockpits. Nothing else, resin, just cockpits. Um, it's not going to be how it's made and all that kind of business. It is just some tips that I've picked up um, about getting it, planning it, and installing it, and all entendres. Okay, so don't be thinking that I'm going to mystify you with jargon because I'm not, because I'm thick um, when it comes to things like that. Anyway, um, so yeah, it's just going to be some bits and pieces. So I'm going to show you what other resin you can get. Um, I suppose you could say this is a beginner's tips video type thing, but anyway, let's turn the camera around and we'll go on what we're talking about. So go on, have a look. Right then, before you have a go at me saying, let me clean your desk, uh, I do apologise, but uh, I've got multiple um, <clears throat> kits on the go. Anyway, this is basically what you can get. Right, oh, here's the tip of the iceberg. You can get things like this, which are, this is for the F-16. It's the engine nozzle uh, for the Tamiya kit. You can get engines, uh, this one, as you can see from Quick Boost. You can even get, ooh, look at this, figures. Yeah, our resin. Okay, those are the legend ones. And also you can get all entendres, as in engine, propellers, gun bays, yeah, you name it. But what we're looking at and concentrating on today is something like this, okay? Uh, the test bed for this one is gonna be the F14D cockpit from Eddard Brazin. And we'll show you some bits and pieces about how to get this done a lot easier and a lot quicker so yeah right then maybe not the uh, the easiest or the best um, example to start with however I just want to show you what you do get in the line of resin now to start off with you could start with resin in practical practically any scale I wouldn't recommend one in 144 because you would just die um, so you can get 72nd, 48th, 24, 30 seconds, and so on and so on and so on. A good scale, I would say, to actually start with, is 148th. Now, you can get kits like these, or within a kit, in, well, in a lot of um, variations. Modern jets, Second World War, First, Pre-War, and everything. If you look for it, you'll find it. Okay, so a good way of actually seeing if you, this particular kit that you have does have, let's say, a resin cockpit that can be used, then my ideal place to start with would be Scalemates. Go onto the kit that you actually um, want to build, go down to see where the actual um, aftermarket parts are for the kit, and if there is one, and if you want one, then you can buy one. It's as easy as that. Okay, so. With this, an NR's a Brazin, okay? You do get an awful lot, but I just want to show you the actual quality of what you do get. And it's not just, you know, a particular manufacturer that is the best. When you're casting resin, um, the way that we are doing at the moment, it is absolutely exceptional. And it is a game changer. <gasps> Or is it? Now, what I am going to say is this. You might find a kit, let's say a Tammy kit, that when you look in the box, first of all, you're like, wow, look at all this detail, all that kind of stuff. Do I really need a resin sort of like, you know, upgrade? Well, if I'm honest with you, no, you don't. So why am I showing you this? Well, I'm just showing you this as an example. However, if you do your homework first and you like the kit and what you've got in it, then I really wouldn't bother doing it, you know, getting the resin um, inserts and upgrades. However, if you want to, it's entirely up to you. Now, like I said, I'm not going to to you with technical jargon and what it's made and all that kind of business but what i will say is when you start off with resin be extremely careful with it 
Okay. Now, what I would normally do is open up a window, like I've just done now. Get yourself a, a very nicely, sort of like well ventilated room. Get yourself a couple of tools. Now, with these, all you want to do is to actually take the moulding block off. All of the resin that I know of will come with some form of resin block, and it's basically what it's taken out of the actual mould itself. Okay. Like I said, some manufacturers won't have it, but most, well, the, all that I know of, they will. So that is what you need to take off. In the instructions, it will give you a full comprehensive guide of actually what's in it, but it should show you exactly where you need to take off. Now, it's not particularly good this one. I've had a look for the instructions and what normally happens is they have like sort of an outline of each part with one part shaded darker than the other. And that is to, to denote basically where to take the actual lugs off. Now with this one, yeah, you can see where it is. It's just basic common sense. But if you are new and this is your first time, just be aware, make sure you look first and take off what is actually needed and don't take off part of the actual kit. Now, to take the actual lugs off and any other parts that you so wish, you can use a, a big clumpy razor saw like this or go into the more delicate part of things and get a razor saw like this. Now, when you start to take off the actual lugs themselves and disclosure, I am not part of the health and safety executive. I do not wear brogues, brown slacks, um, brown shirts with big thick glasses, although I do wear glasses. I'm not from the HSC, okay? What I will say now is when you start cutting this, micro pores and fibers and all that kind of entendres will basically come off go into the atmosphere and if you're breathing it in it can or could make your life a hell of a lot harder later on in life okay if it gets on your lungs it's going to stay there it's never going to go away unless you have a lung transplant so it is safety first make sure you get yeah make sure you're in a well ventilated room um wear a mask well, let's face it, you can get a mask anywhere nowadays. And once you've finished actually taking all the lugs off, okay, put everything to one side, get all your bits that you've cut into one box, all the lugs can go straight into the bin. Then what I normally do is to go around with some IPA and just drizzle it all over the actual desk itself. And with a um, piece of kitchen roll, such as this, just wiping around and keeping the actual airborne particles to an absolute minimum. Once you've done it, clean it all up, all on there, all nice and tidy, chuck it in the bin. However, you will have even more that's even actually on the actual um, mat itself. So what I will do, do another round of that, a clean cloth, and go over it again and get everything off. That is probably the best guarantee that I can give you to actually getting everything off as safely as you possibly can. So okay then, now I said that basically this is quite a, a modern up-to-date sort of like product. Here's one that slightly isn't, okay? This has been around a few years. It is from Ares or Ares or whatever, how you want to pronounce it. And this is obviously for a set for the actual um, engine nozzles for the Tamiya 32nd F16. Now, what I did mention before is you get a set of instructions, and this is what I'm all about. You get the likes of these where you've got the parts themselves, the actual um, parts that you need to take off are in a darker color or sometimes a lighter color depending on the manufacturer, and that is what you need to take off. This is basically been around for a while. As you can see, it's a lot larger, but you can see there that the actual um, 
belt locks or the, uh, the actual um, the lugs are quite large and quite prominent so you are going to be using I would imagine something like this again safety first get yourself in a well ventilated room x y and z and don't have the people in the brown shirts and slacks and brogues coming around giving you what for right now what I'm going to show you now is an example of um, the same manufacturer of the um, nozzles that I've just shown you and this is the Ares or Ares um, copper set for the AV8B the trumpeter 32nd scale now you can well I say it's right from the very beginning the, the detail inside there is absolutely exceptional and blows the actual kit stuff absolutely out of the water it is insane um, I love building it I love putting it together I loved actually painting it with airbrushes and paint brushes and all entendres but one thing you've got to be aware of a lot of this older stuff okay nothing wrong with it however you may need to get a little bit more of the old um, sanding sticks and all entendres to actually get it to fit now let me explain why okay then now with this particular set itself first of all what you needed to do was to actually take off the the molding slab or the lug that was actually on the bottom of the cockpit once that was out of the way and to be honest there wasn't an awful lot of it you're practically good to go or are you now you'll hear me and a lot of modelers say test fit test fit test fit again test fit 25 bloody times and make sure everything fits now the reason for this is thus this actual cockpit is or has been made to the best specs they actually can do for the actual kit parts themselves now when they actually do manufacture these obviously you've got to take into account of wheelbase add-ons for the actual um, radar well, thankfully I'm not using it because it wasn't all that good so I didn't need to use that but you'll have different things like in here you can see just there that is part of the cockpit now with that fitting onto the actual undercarriage bay itself it didn't fit okay there was a question of right okay how do I sort this out and it's as simple as you just keep one side off Put in, keep putting the actual cockpit itself in and test fit in it and see if it's going to actually foul where the actual gut, actual bay is. And it is a simple question of just taking a little bit off at a time and actually making sure that it fits properly. But also take into account that it's not only just lengthways, it can be widthways as well. Now for this particular one, I had to get, well, a drill bit and actually bore out a little bit of the inside of the actual fuselage just to get it actually to fit now some of you may think Christ that's a ball ache it isn't really okay you can do it with a sanding sponge a very very coarse one it may take a little bit of time but you will be given results like these not my painting the actual kit itself okay it will upgrade your kit absolutely phenomenally if that's a word so make sure you test fit and test fit again and only to commit to glue once everything's in this particular part here i actually before i actually glued everything together i popped it together and i put tammy tape all the way around just to make sure that it was fitting correctly once it was done commit to glue and that's it to leave it to dry and that is that so that's it really um not a, a meat and potatoes nuts and bolts video it's just a basic one to show you um that are going to go into i don't know using resin whether it's a cockpit wheel bay wheels and all that kind of entendres that is basically what we do make sure one you're in a well ventilated area you take the precautions, you wear the protection and don't have the man and brogues knocking on your door 
um, waving his pen and notepad at you. Okay, it's not worth it. Go online, go on videos, um, and you can see other people doing it different ways, all safely, but make sure you are doing it correctly or as safe as you possibly can. Now, like I've said, um, the reason why I picked the cockpit is because a lot of the kits nowadays, um, you can have, you know, the canopy's open, you can look inside, and the cockpit is your focal point. When you're looking at things like the Hercules or airliners, everything's enclosed and you can't really see too much. However, when you're on bigger scales, maybe you know, on 48th and upwards, you are going to see a lot of detail in that cockpit. One, take your time. Two, take your time. Think about what you're doing. Think about what order you're going to do it in. Watch some videos and go from there, okay? But just take your time. But the most thing you need to do, the most important thing, is to enjoy it, okay? I enjoyed doing this, okay? Awesome. Not the painting, it's in the detail, okay? So, bearing in mind, go for it, okay? Don't start big, start small. And work from there, okay? And just enjoy it, okay? So, hopefully you learned something. If you haven't, oh well. And uh, I'll see you on the next video. So until then, cheerio. And it's me with my number one fan. Fuck you.